Hey guys, Dan here with today's quarantine video, and uh, Bad Boys for Life has just come out on demand uh, about a week ago, and it will be out on DVD in a couple more weeks. Uh, you can buy it, though, right now for $20 and stream it on uh, Amazon Prime and all of that good stuff. So, I thought, rather than uh, put Bad Boys for Life in with the other recent movies that I reviewed the other day, I had never seen any of the Bad Boys movies, so... I watched all three of them this weekend and uh, figured I could just review all of them <laughs> at once here, um, including the new one, Bad Boys for Life. So you've got Bad Boys from 1995, Bad Boys 2 from 2003, and then uh, a big stretch there uh, before they got the third one up and running, and uh, that is Bad Boys for Life, which came out in January, and it has turned out to be the highest grossing uh, January release ever worldwide. Uh, it's got nearly half a billion dollars uh, from worldwide ticket sales. And, of course, uh, you know, some of the movie theaters got cut a little bit early due to the coronavirus, too. So it probably would have been, I mean, it was still in many, many theaters uh, when the uh, the whole system shut down. So who knows where that would have went uh, further than that. But uh, let's start off here with Bad Boys 1. Now, I, I want to say up front that uh, I like... You know, all kinds of movies. I'm one of these people, oh, I, you know, I like kids' movies, I like dramas, I like sci-fi, I like action, I like, you know, uh, horror sometimes. Um, but the one thing I, I really don't like is just dumb, macho action. Uh, like, when I say I like action movies, I like them to have some sort of a plot. You know, like, I like superhero movies, for example. I would consider them action movies. I like the Hunger Games, and, you know, I like I like things that have a little bit of a brain. Um, but I've enjoyed some of the Fast and Furious films. Not the recent ones, but some of the earlier ones I've enjoyed. And, you know, I, I can certainly get lost in an action movie. Um, but the, the Michael Bay style, which, you know, this was Michael Bay's first huge movie back in 1995, it's just, it's to me, the, the worst kind of movie. It's just so dumb. Um, and I can certainly check my brain at the door for some of these things. Um, but it needs a plot. It needs something other than explosions and people chasing each other and running around. It, it just needs more than that for me. So... With that in mind, I have never really had any interest in watching the Bad Boys films. In fact, I would say it's probably the only movies from Will Smith other than a couple of his late 90s ones that just had horrible reputations, like Wild Wild West, that I've not seen. You know, I was a big Will Smith fan back from the, the Fresh Prince days, even before the TV show, the Fresh Prince music. Um, and Martin Lawrence, I enjoyed the Martin show as well, at least for the first couple of years. Um, so, you know, for this to really not even interest me at all, I think kind of speaks to how I feel about dumb action movies. But, you know, look, over the years, um, I've, I've, I've definitely experienced more because of, you know, trying to see every movie that comes out, uh, than I, than I would have, you know, back in the mid nineties when I was in college, I just, you know, first of all, the movie theater was a car drive away, and I didn't have a car till junior year, so two years there, unless it showed up on campus, like Twister. We ran Twister uh, on campus, and that is a dumb, dumb, dumb movie. <laughs> Did not really care for Twister, but, you know, I had seen some action movies through that. Um, but Bad Boys, for whatever reason, just was never one of those movies. Um, maybe they didn't show R-rated movies on campus, I don't remember. Um, but these are all very R-rated, very profanity-laced. Um, and, you know, it was really the first I remember of Will Smith doing that sort of uh, acting. You know, the, the R-rated, profanity-laced. And I think maybe part of that was him trying to shed his image. I don't know. So um, so let's, let's talk about all of these movies here. So the first Bad Boys, like I said, was uh, back from 1995... <laughs> Um, and basically, 
Uh, this is, you know, Bruckheimer produced it, and he's he's done, of course, a lot of these big budget action movies. Some of which I've liked. I mean, I liked uh, The Rock. Is that the one I saw? I think, yeah, this is Nick Cage, right? Uh, I, and I liked that. I mean, it was dumb, but it was it was fun, you know. And and sometimes these can be fun for sure. Um, but so basically, they play. Uh, you know, Mike is uh, Will Smith, and Marcus is Martin Lawrence. Um, and there are two Miami cops here. And in this first one, uh, there's a hundred million dollars uh, worth of heroin that uh, sort of goes south here with uh, the biggest drug bust in their career uh, because it's stolen out of the basement of the, the police station. So what do they do? I don't know. They go after this French drug lord um, who kills a bunch of people. And then they have their one witness, the beautiful Taya Leone, uh, and she ends up teaming up with the guys, and they kind of don't let her go on the the uh, bus and stuff. And oh, you know, you got to stay here. But she ends up, you know, getting involved, of course. Um, and then we sort of in the cor throughout the course of this movie, and really all three of the movies, uh, learn about the different lifestyles that uh, these two guys lead. You know, Marcus is a married man, and he's uh, he's about to you know move in with his wife and kids, and uh, Mike is the forever bachelor, you know, he's got all the, all the ladies, and, you know, so their, their two lifestyles are, are night and day, you know, it's, it's so, it's so friggin' standard, um, but I will say this, I've loved Taya Leone for, like, 25 years, she did a Fox show called Flying Blind back in the very early 90s, and uh, I was a big fan of that show, and then, um, took a few years, really, to kind of take off, but this was one of her first big things. She was also on um, the a TV show. She headlined a TV show on NBC called The Naked Truth, which ran for, I think, three seasons or so. Um, so, you know, I, I was always a pretty big Taya Leone fan, and now I watch her in Madam Secretary. Um, but this was, like, her first big movie, for sure. Um, and, and it was great to see her. I actually completely forgot that she was part of the cast. So, you know, when she showed up as uh, the 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 woman in charge here um, and the head witness. Then I was like, okay, now now you've given me a little bit of uh, diversity at least, um, and I think this movie is okay. Uh, it's definitely way too Michael Bay uh, in in the explosions and the the car chases and the nonstop action. I don't think it necessarily also needed to be as expletive as it was you know it it seemed to me that will smith was really trying to like shed that you know fun guy image from fresh prince of bel-air and some of his other earlier movies and now he's just going hard you know martin lawrence of course was known for his blue comedy and had to tone it down actually for the for the tv show um so that was right in his wheelhouse i do think that there's good chemistry between the two guys for sure there's no denying that. I mean, I think that's why people have been drawn to this series for 25 years. I think the chemistry of the two leads is obvious. Um, I just wish there was more of a story here. Uh, it's okay, um, but it's 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 pretty thin. And I, I, don't, I think in the hands of a different director, this could have been a... Maybe not a more thought-provoking movie. I mean, I don't think with, with this script and you know with this type of movie i don't think you're ever going to get something that that is real pensive um but uh, you know like for example the the fallen series i actually really liked the first one olympus has fallen i thought was really good i gave it like in the b range maybe in a v, even a b plus you know it that was a, an action movie but you know there was a lot of stakes going on and and it was uh i thought it was much better done than that white house down with jamie fox uh, which was pretty much the same premise. Uh, but then London Has Fallen was horrible. You know, there just was, <laughs> it was so generic and so bad. And then the third one that they did in 2019 was was all right. Um, and that's almost how I feel about the Bad Boy series. I'm not sure if uh, I can say it's in that order. I'm not sure if the first one is my favorite. Um, but the first one is, is definitely decent. It's better than I thought it would be. Um, let's say that, but again, you know, you don't have a franchise go for 
25 years over the course of three movies and, and people really uh, flocking to that third movie unless there's some sort of uh, something here that is that is more than just for dumb action movie fans. And so, um, you know, I, I also I think Will Smith is kind of on an upswing. People really liked uh, the, well... Aladdin, the movie, was hit or miss, but I think most people liked his, his version of the genie, um, you know, and so so he's a little bit on the upswing with that. Um, but anyway, I'm sort of bouncing all over the place here, because this really is a, a, a review of all three movies, you know, and, and the trilogy as a whole, and, and why it is so beloved. So you have to sort of bounce all over the place uh, to talk about each movie. But um, I would say the first one is of the pretty good variety um, you know, I don't, I don't think I'll ever watch it again, but it's one of those that if somebody was like, oh, you know, let's pop on Bad Boys, I would say, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll watch it. Um, because I really do like the chemistry, and I'm actually going through, uh, the old Martin TV series. I'm on season four right now, and that is right about this time, like right about 94, 95, uh, is when that season took place. So, you know, this is when Martin Lawrence was really stepping out from the TV show uh, into his first really major movie. Will Smith had done a few movies um, before, you know, from the Fresh Prince show. He did Made in America with Whoopi Goldberg. He did a drama movie called Six Degrees of Separation. But, you know, he, he hadn't really done anything, you know, of this variety yet. You know, Independence Day was still a year off. Um, so, for the first foray... I didn't think it was too bad. Michael Bay's direction, as always, is way too overwhelming. You know, it's way too, like, oh, grr, macho, you know, get get the explosions, you know. And that wears thin because you need, I think, a better plot. Um, but the three of them, you know, if you include Taya Leone, the three of them had, had good chemistry together. I think there was a lot of fun in this movie, which is the point of them. So I give the first Bad Boys a B minus. That might actually be a little high because of it's so dumb and all the explosions, but I do like the chemistry here between all three of the people. And, um, you know, I think if I had seen this movie in 95, it also might be a little more original than it is now. I mean, it is a lot like some of those dumb action movies, but we've had in the last decade, since Fast and Furious took off, we've had so many just dumb, dumb, dumb action movies. <laughs> that I think back in 95, it was definitely a little bit more of a rarity um, than it is these days. And I always sort of try and take into consideration the historical value, you know, of, of something like this. So we move forward now, eight years, 2003, Bad Boys 2. Um, and at this point, Will Smith's career was, you know, skyrocketed to the moon, um, you know, he had released a couple of duds, you know, I mentioned Wild Wild West already, which was, uh, it made a lot of money, but it was not well received. But, you know, he had, uh, a couple of Men in Black movies in the can by then, which were extremely popular. Um, I don't think Shark Tale had come out yet. Um, so, well, maybe though, it was probably right around that time. Um, but anyway, you know, he was a bona fide A-list movie star. Martin Lawrence actually also in 2003 was was no slouch in that department because the Big Mama's House uh, series was pretty well received. I think maybe only the first one was out by this point. Um, but, you know, he had, he had certainly um, had uh, a successful resurgence in, in his stand-up career by then after a few public missteps. But, um, you know, they decided to go for it, get back in the game. And again, Will Smith was still not really doing a lot of R-rated content. I mean, it was still mostly family-friendly, PG-13 type stuff. Um, so he decided to get back into it. Michael Bay is back at the helm for this one. Uh, and here, they've uh, been assigned to a big task force, still in Miami here. Um, and there's a, a big conspiracy involved with uh, a big kingpin, and, and they sort of get some bad intel about him. Um... And so there's there's a whole you know drug war with that um, as as they sort of search for good intel and uh, their friendship is sort of being tested here as well because uh, the forever bachelor Mike is uh, dating Marcus's sister and they try to keep it from him for a little while and 
you know, they, they do an, they do an okay job of keeping it from him um, for a little while anyway. And uh, she is played by Gabrielle Union. Yes, of course. I knew it was one of those, uh, the famous women that we see pop up in uh, a lot of, you know, the African-American movies. Um, and uh, this is, you know, really probably one of her first big ones, too. She was in, like, one of the dancing ones, right? Was she in Bring It On? That was cheerleading, I guess. But she was in Bring It On, right? That's, like, one of her big ones. Let's, let's look at some of her early movies. I'm not too much. Uh, oh, She's All That. Oh, I love She's All That. Uh, Bring It On, yeah, she was in Bring It On, and that was uh, a few years before this, that was in 2000, um, and, you know, by this point she was kind of branching out from more, more you know, family-friendly kitty type roles, and she was doing Deliver Us from Eva, and uh, Cradle to the Grave, and Bad Boys too. so, she, you know, she's definitely trying to expand her horizons as well at this point, um, so... That's the general plot of Bad Boys 2, also rather generic. Here is my biggest problem with this movie. It's two and a half friggin' hours long. There is no need for this movie to go past like an hour and 45, hour and 50. It's just, it's spread way too thin. Uh, it's super homophobic. Uh, it's kind of racist. They they There's like some uh, some Indian jokes that martin lawrence makes uh and it's just like wow dude like even in 2003 this seems pretty hacky to me um uh, but it just it speaks to the amping up the macho-ness of of this series and it's like okay dude we get it you know you're you're a man like you're cool like at one point um well, I guess this is this sort of harkens back to the first one too. I guess with the homophobia, but um, you know, Taya Leone sees the the pictures in the house. She's like, "Oh, you know, what's what's going on here with you guys? You know, whatever." And you know, uh, Marcus is like, "Oh, I'm all man." You know, da 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 da. It's like, all right, dude, cool. You know, um, <sighs> you know, and you do sort of have to take things into a historical context. All right, like it, it wasn't cool to be gay in t 1995. Believe me, I know, because I had come out a couple of years earlier in high school, and it was uh, it was okay, but you know, it, it certainly wasn't cool to be gay. That's for sure. Um, so, you know, okay, fine, you know, but it all of that stuff just just amps up the whole like I am Michael Bay, and I make movies for men's men, and like. Uh, you know, I can enjoy an action movie too, everybody. <laughs> like, I really can. But it just, it has to be coherent. It has to not be based on the explosions. You have to have some plot here. Um, again, the chemistry with the, again, three leads, you can throw Gabrielle Union into the mix, um, is great. You know, they clearly have a fun time working together um, and and all of that, but there's no reason for this movie to be two and a half hours. It's a slog to get through because of that. Um, everything was sort of resolved about an hour and 40 minutes in, and then they just took a left turn and made another plot, <laughs> you know, to, to really stretch it out. And Michael Bay, I think, is one of these directors that does have a problem uh, editing the movies because like the Transformers movies are all longer than they need to be. Maybe not the first one, but certainly the ones like in the middle there are all longer than they need to be. Um, I would say even even that first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie he he uh, produced, he didn't direct it, but he produced it. That's probably ten or fifteen minutes too long, you know. Um, so I, I think he is one of these directors that, that has that that editing issue. Um, there's just no reason for it to be this long. There's no reason for it to be this misogynistic and racist and homophobic. And, um, you know, we get it. Dudes are going to come see this movie and they love the bad boys for life and all that. Um, but other than the chemistry with the leads, this movie doesn't have a ton going for it. It's easily the worst in the series. I mean, by leaps and bounds, I would say. So I give bad boys to a, a D plus. So, finally, we come to Bad Boys for Life. Now, this is, you know, about a decade in the making. You know, close to the end of the uh, 2000s, they were talking about it and how are we going to do this. And Michael Bay was going to come, and then he his asking price was too high, so they said F off. Um, so he didn't direct it. The, uh, the people that directed it are actually, I guess, like new directors, I mean, at least in terms of, uh, like, a major Hollywood production. Um, 
Adil El Arbi and Bilar Bil Bilar Bilal Falah. These are these are hard names for me, and I apologize. Um, but they're uh, they're Belgian, and they've done a few movies, you know, in their home uh, their home country. But Bad Boys for Life is the first one that they have really um, you know taken from like a Hollywood blockbuster standpoint uh, for sure. Um, however, one of the writers of this movie, Peter Craig, uh, has written a lot of really good movies. He wrote The Town. He wrote um, the two Mockingjay movies, which, granted, were not the strongest from the Hunger Games series, but, um, you know, he was working with the book, so the book is not the strongest either, I understand. Um, and he also wrote the new Top Gun movie that will be out, well, it's supposed to be out later this year, but I don't know what's happening with movies anymore, so we'll see. But uh, Top Gun Maverick, he wrote that as well. So the guy has a good Hollywood pedigree. And uh, the other writer, Joe Carnahan, let's see what he's written. Um, because I looked up the one guy, but I didn't look up him. Okay, well, he, uh, wrote and directed Smoke and Aces, which I did not care for. Uh, okay, so he wrote and directed The A-Team, which I thought was pretty fun. Um, The Grey, I didn't really care for. Um, and he wrote Death Wish with Bruce Willis. Okay, now listen. There's an example, I mean, that is a very machoed up movie. That is a, like, total, like, cliche-ridden hardcore man's man movie. And I thought it was okay. I mean, I think I gave it a C or a C plus. I thought that was okay. You know, I don't mind a good revenge picture, um, which with these kind of are not, except for this one. Bad Voice for Life kind of is a revenge picture. Um, so basically what happens is um, they... Okay, so... Um, the, the wife and son of this big Mexican kingpin drug lord... Um, have have this this journey to kind of kill everybody uh, that's that's been involved in his imprisonment and everything, and that includes good old Mike Lowry. Um, so he gets wounded and calls up Marcus and says, "Look, one last ride, you know, classic Fast and Furious style. One last ride, bad boys for life. Let's do this." Marcus says, "No, no, no," for a long time, um, and. You know, eventually, obviously, as you would figure, he says, "Okay, let's do this, bad boys for life. Um, let's let's get it on." So uh, we have Vanessa Hudgens here as uh, one of the co-stars, um, and Joey Pants. By the way, I should mention has been in all three of these movies. Joe Pantoliano has been in all the bad boys movies, and he is a bright spot, even in two stupid, stupid two. Um, you know, it is always nice to see Joey Pants. And what's nice is, you know, he started this series before he was really anybody. I mean, it was long before The Sopranos. Um, and yet he kept, you know, coming back. 2003, Sopranos was like at its height. Um, or just about. I think it started like in the late 90s, right? So by 2003, it was still very popular. Um, so, you know, it was it was cool that he came back for that. And, uh, and nice to see him in this one as well. So I, I do want to mention this. DJ Khaled is in this too, which I, which I always sort of uh, dislike. I mean, like, I don't know. I like some of DJ Khaled's music, but they keep putting him in these movies. Like, sometimes it makes sense. Like, Pitch Perfect 3, at least it kind of made sense. Um, and he's always pretty much playing like himself, even if he's not playing himself. But, you know, he's always playing like a DJ or a producer or a singer or whatever. Um, so, okay, fine. But um, this, I think, had the best humor probably of all three. Um, I think the chemistry is still there, believe it or not, after all this time. Um, Martin Lawrence, God bless him, has uh, really, you know, uh, gotten some weight on him. Uh, and Will Smith looks a little older, but he still looks about the same as he did 20 years ago. I mean, you know, the guy is uh is good black don't crack you know he he is uh, aging very well martin lawrence uh and it's funny because if you look at the posters like they've sort of done like more side views of martin lawrence you know um so you don't see how how heavy he's gotten um and i think it's a shame um because it always it like <sighs> For example, Top Gun. Let's go back to that for a second. If you know, you've seen pictures maybe recently of Val Kilmer. You're like, oh my god, like how's he gonna pull off Top Gun? Um, so that will be interesting. But it's it's sad to say that it it does 
detract a little bit for me, somebody who has seen all of these movies now in order in one weekend, and Martin Lawrence, you know, does not look the same from A to C, and Will Smith kind of does, you know, he's, he's maybe a little more uh, grizzled, but 25 years on, uh, he still looks pretty darn good. So um, th the chemistry is still here, though. You know, Martin Lawrence, I, I actually like Martin Lawrence a lot. You know, I think his TV show went off the rails about season three. Like I said, I'm watching season four, and it's like, it's kind of tough to get through, but I'm going to watch all five seasons. But, um, you know, he, he got a very swelled head, I think, when he got a bunch of fame and uh, became sort of a target for tabloids and um, and that kind of thing. So for him, this is like a comeback vehicle, obviously. For Will Smith, I think it's a lot of fun, you know, going home again to uh, one of the movies that made him. And, uh, you know, but like I said, his career's... He's had ebbs and flows for sure, but his career's been on the upswing for a little bit here with uh, Aladdin. And uh, Gemini Man, you know, wasn't very well received by critics, but it did okay in theaters. Um... And he's done a couple other projects, you know, recently that people have enjoyed. But um, Martin Lawrence, I mean, this is his first major picture in a while. I mean, even Big Mama's House 3, which didn't do that well. But even that was like 10 years ago, maybe more, maybe 12 years ago. So, um, you know, to see the two back in action, doing what they do, having fun, and this time with a script... Oh my gosh, there was actually like a plot to this one that was not super generic. And because Michael Bay didn't direct it, we were able to actually enjoy more of the, um, you know, the, the action scenes because they weren't just hitting us every three minutes. You know, we were actually able to enjoy, you know, the moments in between the big car chases and explosions. And then we were able to enjoy the action sequences as well. Um, because it wasn't overwhelming our senses. So, for me, this one actually is the best one in the series. Um, you know, and, and proof that, look, I can do a dumb action movie. It just has to be coherent and, you know, <laughs> have more going on than cars chasing each other. Uh, which is why, you know, the, the Fast and Furious franchise, the last couple of them have just really gone off the deep end. You know, but, but Fast and Furious could take a book or take a page from the Bad Boys book. Maybe every year we don't need a Fast and Furious movie, you know? This year, I guess we're not going to get one because of uh, COVID-19, but we were supposed to. It was supposed to be released, uh, I think, within a week or so, or maybe it was this week it was going to be released. Um, but that's been pushed back to 2021. So this year we won't get one. But, you know, last year we had Hobbs and Shaw. The year before that we had that horrible, horrible one with the, where they're on the in the tank on the, ocean, or on the, uh, the ice or whatever. Anyway, um... You know, I think they could take a page from Bad Boys and maybe only have one every four years, you know. I mean, James Bond. James Bond, that's an action series. Mission Impossible, that's an action series that I love, you know. Um, so I, it's not that I don't love action movies, but I would say, you know, dumb, macho action movies are easily my least favorite genre um, of, of film. But, uh, but this one is my favorite of the three for sure. It's slightly better than the first one. Um, if only because it's not as explosion heavy, uh, you know, it's, it's a little more subtle. It's got a better storyline. Um, but the, you know, the chemistry was certainly there from the beginning. That is impossible to deny. Uh, I leave bad boys for life with a B. So, uh, there you go. Enjoy those movies. Uh, the first two are available on Netflix for free, by the way. And then the third one, like I said, is up for purchase now for $20 on Amazon Prime and iTunes and all of those things. And then you can get it on Blu-ray uh, before the end of April. I'll be back tomorrow with a Connors review. There is a new episode tomorrow. Uh, then Wednesday is The Masked Singer. And then uh, I downloaded Quibi today. Today is the launch date of Quibi. So uh, I'm going to have a review of... Quibi shows, I guess, at some point this week, too. Um, there's 50 shows that are up, so I'm not going to probably watch all of them, but they are all in, like, 8 to 10 minute bites. That's the whole point. Quick bites is Quibi. So, um, we'll see how that goes. But I got a 90-day free trial, so uh, I'll, I don't know if I'll stick with it after that, but I'll at least 
enjoy it for the 90 days and, and bring you guys some reviews from that. So that will do it for today's uh, quarantine video. Thank you for watching. Please comment below if you love these movies. If you hate these movies, let me know your thoughts on the Bad Boys trilogy. Uh, and thanks so much for watching. Be safe. We'll see you next time. Bye.